In the past few days, the NHL has seen a pretty interesting development in the standings. This is a conversation that I didn't really think we'd be having, but alas, here we are. Today we're talking about the Columbus Blue Jackets and what fan sentiment seems to be regarding the team and its recent stretch of games. The development that we had been talking about has been at the bottom of the standings. You see, for most of the year, Columbus was the front runner, first place team in the Connor Bedard lottery for first overall. Not because they're going to get the pick, but because they would have the highest odds should they keep up that last place standing in the league. But if you go over to the NHL standings today and you sort into the overall points, you could see that Columbus is no longer last place in the NHL. In fact, that honor belongs to the Chicago Blackhawks, who have the worst winning percentage and the lowest amount of points, too. In between Chicago and Columbus, you have yourselves Anaheim, who has 56 points on the season there, second last in points and second last in points percentage. And for the Blue Jackets, it's really intriguing to note because the Blackhawks and the Ducks have each lost eight games in a row in regulation. Chicago is 2-8-0 in their last 10. Anaheim is 1-9-0. So when you talk about teams that have been really giving themselves the best chance to get Bedard, and I'm not going to go out there and say that the players are intentionally losing, but just looking on paper, the results of who's winning and who's losing, you could technically say that with all the losses, the Ducks and the Blackhawks are really winning. But... For Columbus, things are a little bit different. If you go over to the Blue Jackets in their last 10 games, they're not 1-9-0 like the Ducks or 2-8-0 like the Blackhawks. They're 3-6-1, and, and they actually won their game yesterday in overtime against an Ottawa Senators team that's been struggling too. If you go over to the Blue Jackets and their recent few games, of course there's that Sens game we talked about. They lost in overtime to the Bruins on Thursday. They beat the Islanders in overtime on March 24th. And then they also won in overtime against the Capitals too. This team is finding a way to squeak out points in these overtime games. And as a result, you have Aaron Portsline who had himself this Twitter thread, which is kind of why I'm making this video in the first place. This is what he has to say. I've been as vocal as anybody about the pointlessness and emptiness of these late season wins. They mean nothing, say nothing, gain nothing, and they have the potential to seriously destroy your chances to land the exceptional players CBJ have always missed in the draft but I don't know what the Blue Jackets management can do. Did you see the lineup versus the Senators, a 4-3 overtime win? 12 of the 18 players haven't played 100 NHL games. Five haven't even played in 20. The goaltender, John Gillies, has eight wins and an 8.93 save percentage in his career. They still won that game, dude. Crazy. Boston was absolutely dreadful on Thursday when Columbus scraped an overtime loss point. Ottawa looked awful on Sunday, even though they're supposedly in a desperate race to make the playoffs. That Stutzla turnover in OT was laughable, and you can't put it on a platter any better than that. The rest of the NHL is convinced that CBJ are tanking, but to many CBJ fans, they aren't tanking nearly hard enough. They're 3-3-1 three, three and one in their last seven, which is over 500. They now sit in 30th place and could slide to number 5 in the draft order. Greetings, Mr. Mishkov. See you in 2026. Why can't Boone Jenner oversleep and miss a meeting? Why must Sean Corrali push his way back through an injury to play these games? Seriously, Marchenko, can you save some of these for next season and beyond? Must you block all these shots, Andrew Peake? There are six games to go. And... This Twitter thread is really weird. Like, I'm not going to go out there and say that this is normal behavior from a guy that's writing in The Athletic, kind of venting out his frustrations in regards to the team winning hockey games. But from the perspective that Portsline has, hey, Connor Bedard was kind of the prize all year. And a lot of Blue Jackets fans, after the start that they had had, realized that it was a real possibility that they would be able to get this type of a player. Sure, you signed Yadro. Sure, you signed Good Branson. You got all these guys that were supposed to be good. But... He got out of the gate slow, you weren't really performing all too well, you stayed last for most of the year, and now at the end, this is where you're starting to string together some wins. You're above 500 in your last seven games, meanwhile, Anaheim and Chicago are, what, they've got two points out of a possible 20, two or four, something like that? It's pretty wild, seeing how this race for Bedard has been sort of being more in the forefront than the Boston Bruins' dominance winning all these games and setting all these point records. Like, for me personally, I'm more emotionally invested in this Columbus-Anaheim-Chicago thing because, 
okay, if Conor Bedard goes to one of these teams, their franchise has changed forever. And that's not to discredit the idea of a Fantilli or a Mishkov or a Leo Carlson also being talented enough to warrant some good rewards for these teams, but hey, Conor Bedard is Conor Bedard, and that's kind of all I need to say on that front. It's just, for Blue Jackets fans, it's really interesting because you can't really do too much about this. Obviously, you can't do anything. Like, you're a fan. You don't have any control of the team, right? You could just sit there and think about the team. But there's nothing really that the Blue Jackets management can do more to make this team lose out on games, you know? It's just kind of how the cards have been dealt. This team on paper is inexperienced. They're supposed to be bad. They have players that have not done too much at this level. Yet, they're still finding ways to get loser points and win in overtime and do all this stuff. Sure, you could attribute a lot of their success in the last game to Tim Stutzla. That's maybe why they even got the extra point in the first place. But, overall, it's just a weird problem to have. I know a lot of Canucks fans here on the West Coast are saying pretty much the same thing about the Canucks winning games and not getting Connor Bedard odds and everything, but the problem is Vancouver has players that are so talented that are among the best in the league in point production. You've got defenders like Quinn Hughes going out there and producing so much. You've got Pedersen and Miller doing their thing that it's kind of unrealistic at this point to expect them to be able to lose as much as Canucks fans would probably want them to. Sure, earlier on in the year, it was really bad, and that's kind of why they got themselves a head start in that Bedard race in the first place with all the losses under Boudreau, but... Columbus is not in that territory. Johnny Gaudreau, unfortunately, is not a 100-point guy this year, and nor are anybody else on the team. So, for a team like Columbus that has lacked that number one just overall caliber player for so long, and you could debate that they even still are lacking it because Gaudreau has not been that this season, it kind of sucks seeing things go down the way they have been. They're winning games now, they're getting points, Anaheim and Chicago are not getting points, and now, if Columbus goes from the first overall odds all the way to, like, second or, not second, fourth or fifth in the draft, period, then I feel like a lot of Blue Jackets fans would be pretty disappointed with the way the season ended up turning out, even though it's not really the fault of the players, you know? Portsline calls out Andrew Peak blocking shots, Sean Corrali working his way back into the lineup, and Marchenko scoring all these goals, Boone Jenner not oversleeping and getting sent down like Trey Fix Wolanski was earlier in the week, but like, yeah, this is a very weird Twitter thread realistically, like I've never seen this before from a beat writer talking about how the team is not really doing their best to tank. Like that's a crazy thing to say. The rest of the NHL is convinced the Blue Jackets are tanking, but to many Blue Jackets fans, they aren't tanking hard enough. Oh boy, that's some pretty harsh language now, isn't it? So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Columbus Blue Jackets and how they've had their season kind of fall apart towards the end, and not in the way that you would expect when I say the phrase fall apart. They've started to win games, and they're not really in that Bedard standing as well as they had been earlier on anymore. So, thoughts in the comment section below if you're a Blue Jackets fan. What are your opinions about the team winning? I hope you enjoyed this Vritishraj Rolls 99. And, bye.